University has. Okay, just a, a transition into uh, looking at our K-5 math resources. Uh, we've spent a considerable amount of time this spring uh, putting together a committee of people, looking at resources, uh, responding to both the board, the community, and our staff's uh, interest in looking at other resources available to our students, um, other than the, the current resources that we have available. The initial task was to identify what other resources are out there. Uh, we looked at three significant programs, uh, three significant resources, Envision, Go Math, and Math and Focus. Um, our administrators, including myself, did site visits to uh, several school districts. We've been on the phone with many school districts, identifying what plans that they have, what are they doing with their district, um, how they're transitioning away from modules, um, and such, what kind of professional development they're offering and how they're offering that professional development. Uh, we put together a math resource committee. Um, it was uh, representatives from each of our elementary schools. We didn't have as many as we would like based upon the timing of the, of the school year. Uh, our first meeting was, was about you know maybe five to six people. Um, that did grow significantly. We did have uh, much more administrative input during the second meeting as well. So we're, we're pleased with the number of people who participated. Um, and we had a very nice cross-section of, uh, of experiences. One of the goals that we had used in the literacy team meetings this year is identifying what our non-negotiables are. And I think that's a really key, important task because those are your drivers. And that's what's going to take you from where you are today to where you want to go, not just next year, but the next five years. And I think that common language of developing those non-negotiables, not only in literacy, but also in mathematics, sends that very clear message to every classroom teacher about what the expectations are, creates that consistency of experience across the classrooms and across the elementary schools. Ultimately, so that every child who, who leaves the elementary schools, the middle schools, get to the high school, they have that same common experience, that same common language. We did a significant uh, resource review of those three resources there, as well as having the publishers come in and present to our faculty and to our administrators. The non-negotiables were developed by our teachers. And I think that's a, another key point because they're in the trenches, they understand what our kids need, they have gone through the transition of the modules, they have implemented the new standards, and they understand where we are today and where we want to continue to go. And to hear conversations from staff saying, this isn't rigorous enough, this would be below what we're currently doing, um, I think is a, that's an exciting time for us as a, as a district to, to have elementary math teachers be able to speak about mathematics and to speak about it in such a, a, a frank, educated way. Um, so these are some of the items that we, we thought about were non-negotiables, were really important to us. Um, the friendly, the parent-friendly piece, the digital component is, is something that came up continuously throughout the time. And the scaffolding. Uh, the scaffolding and building it from kindergarten all the way up through the middle school. I have to say, when I read through the minutes of, I guess, your, your, your meeting, and it was really you know, they had the three choices, and they went for, uh, for math and focus. Yes. We had one of, the, one of the boxes on the table. We had one in the closet we wouldn't bring out. But they, they said, no, we didn't want to look at Yeah, I thought that was fantastic. Resource. Yeah, so, that's great. Uh, these are other things that we wanted to look at, which was um, manipulative professional development. was another key thread that we, we wove throughout. And from a historical perspective here, you know, professional development is something that's really important, obviously, in schools. Uh, but at times has not been as consistent as it needs to be, and that's something that we wanted to make sure that we built in and supported the teachers along the way. The consensus of the committee was math and focus. Um, it's used in a variety of different districts throughout um, Nassau and Suffolk. Um, it is something that we feel is a perfect next step for us as far as moving away from modules. Um, it's a very sound resource with a lot of different options for different for students at different levels. Um, so there are there are opportunities for students who are not as strong in their skills at this point to students who need to be accelerated, need to be pushed a little bit more, as well as the parent component. And that's something we're very excited about. These are some of the key features. Um, and I think, you know, as we, we item that we, we listed the items, uh, you know, a focused and coherent syllabus was the critical piece for us. Our teachers have been working over this summer, and what they've done is they have taken 
um, the topics that will be covered at each of the grade levels. We color coded them to which ones are our key topics that we need to be covered, which ones are topics that you just need to you know kind of raise over the surface, and what topics that if you have time you can cover. And then we correlated that to where you can find it in Math and Focus and where you can find it in the modules. Uh, and this is kind of a crosswalk for our teachers. It, it provides a real good opportunity for them to be able to look at the, the different resources and see what's best for their kids at that moment. Can I just ask a question? How many teachers are in this, this summer doing this? Thank you, Andrew. Sorry. These are all available. What we have is uh, we've created a Z drive, uh, it's a shared drive for all of our elementary teachers. The access has already gone out to them, so teachers have access to it right now. Um, and we have representatives from each of the grade levels that participated in this project. So we're really excited about it. And teachers already have access to the online components as well, so they already have that available to them now. This is a piece that uh, we have consistently heard over time that we really did a, a poor job with um, as helping our parents move along with the Common Core as well as, as our teachers. Um, they have a huge digital component that will uh, seamlessly work with all the technology we're putting into the elementary classrooms. Um, and then teachers will have, uh, parents will have um, opportunities for online resources as well. I think right now we have five parent nights set up for next year. Um, parent nights that will be run with uh, our math department director as well as our publisher. They'll come in together, they'll co-plan the activities, uh, go through the, 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 the whole resource for parents um, at a very detailed level. We expect everybody to be there, so we're really excited about that. We'll hold they're on the calendar. And they're, they're already on the calendar. They're planning that. We don't even have a Bethany, we're settled dates. Yes, we have an elementary Bethany settled dates. Can we, is there a possibility of um, video taping? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Putting them up on the website so that anybody that cannot attend that wishes to watch the presentation. Question. Because uh, I know I went to uh, one of the math ones when we did for the Common Core modules, my wife went to them. Um, and when I brought some of that feedback to parents who couldn't attend, you know, they went. Overwhelmed, and they you know, embraced it. So I think it's important. We'll put a link on our, on our new website. It'll be perfect. Excellent idea. And most importantly, it's not just about the online resources, what the resources can do, but more importantly, you know, a continual support for parents about how to support and help their, their children um, at home. And that's something that we have uh, we've worked on, but I think we can do a better job. And again, it goes back to the, the multiple, multiple representations of mathematics and how we can you know, go from a concrete to a pictorial to an abstract for our students. And that's the common basis and foundation that we're looking for with all the programs. So let me ask you a question. How does this marry into the current modules and professional developments that we've um, spent countless hours, times, and money on? Great, because it is a, what we have done is, uh, is kind of like building blocks. We built a very strong foundation for our, our staff um, not only with resources, but also with professional development, and they are ready for that next step. So they're excited about it, and a little bit nervous, but you know, I, I really feel it's going to be a smooth transition. We should be fully transitioned um, probably in January of 2017. You know, Marla, uh, Comac did it the same exact way we're doing it, so we're not the only district that have all that training for Common Core, and then move into, and they're actually, they actually moved into this program also. So I think that what we do is good. So this is a summary of just some of the advantages. Um, you know, we'll, we'll put the presentation up on the website so parents can have an opportunity to look at them. I don't need to go, but again, parent friendly, aligned to the standards, uh, forces a deep understanding, differentiates for all types of learners, which is against that, that common theme we were looking for. 
As I mentioned before, we are currently, we're actually almost finished with our curriculum writing for our elementary math, and de developing those crosswalks. Um, we'll have letters going out to parents at the beginning of the school year that we have written for everybody so that they can understand where we are, what we're doing, what to expect. Uh, calendars have been established and recommended days um, for module lessons compared to things. We've had teachers who sat down and said, you know what, the module is a, is a much better lesson than the math and focus one. And that they put as a little asterisk to see if, you know, for teachers to, to kind of focus on that area. So one of the things that we're looking at with all of our curricular changes and implementations is a multi-year plan. Um, so that it's not just this year you know what's happening and you have to kind of figure out what's happening next year. Uh, we're laying out at least a three-year plan for both literacy and mathematics so that the board has a, a strong understanding of what's happening now, what's going to happen next year. It is a fluid plan. Uh, we will continually update you with regards to what we're doing and if things change. Uh, but it gives you a nice overview of the plan of, of how we're, we're embedding our professional development, what our focuses are on different grade levels at different times, and it gives you uh, you know, some comfort to know that this is not just a, a one-shot deal and then we're going to walk away tomorrow, so that there's embedded professional development curriculum writing going on. And, uh, you know, summer of, of 2017, um, we're going to be looking at rolling uh, it up into the middle schools to see how we, we fare in the middle schools. Again, we'll have a committee of teachers that we put together. They'll, uh, they'll meet three times throughout the year to review what's happening, to see what's working, what's not working, what things need to be changed. And again, we'll embed that into the curriculum writing as we move forward. So after, um, after your pilot of uh, math and focus, would you be able to do, like, say, a survey of those parents to say, you know, whether they liked it, what they found great about the program, you know? You, you know Absolutely, right? yeah. So then you can extend it. And then we can build, build on the professional development right. for them as well. Can I ask another question? What are we doing with middle school now? Middle school currently uses modules as uh, their primary resource. Um, because they are in a separate building, uh, you know, we, we, we want to keep them a little, as a separate entity. So whatever the middle schools decide, um, I think Focus does have a great middle school product that does do six, seventh, and eighth. The caveat is you have to remember that our seventh and eighth grade teachers are certified math teachers. So they are math content specialists. Um, so a lot of what they do is built around the standards and then resources that they put together. But uh, we are looking to standardize the resource for K through eight. Um, are the discussions with the middle school teachers going to happen sooner rather than later with the possibility of if they wish to move the plan up, move the plan up, or is that something that can't happen? I'm only scared for the fact that your current fifth graders are going to be getting a tired of the program and those fifth grade teachers are learning and then those kids are going to move to sixth grade and those current sixth graders are going to get the same process of their teacher implementing a brand new program. The, um, the, the committee so will be discussing it starting in January. Yeah, then you said there might be a chance to. And my, my gut is that uh, it, everything gen tends to move quicker than, than slower. So uh, I do anticipate that happening. And again, you see the three-year overview of uh, professional development and how it's been embedded into what we're doing. Uh, we currently have a professional developer on uh, contract that we have been using. Um, it's an embedded model of professional development. We're not pulling teachers out. Uh, we haven't pulled teachers out this past year significantly to lose class or lose instructional time. Uh, the model has really worked well. Uh, she's connected with our teachers. She's going to continue to support our teachers in that same model. Uh, we do have time where teachers are going to be pulled out by grade level, uh, but we're also going to embed the professional development within their school day so that they will be able to uh, not miss that instructional time, but still have that unique grade level and building experience uh, to maintain that. Um, 